Britain's powerful Lancaster bombers preparing for another night raid on Nazi Germany. Raids calculated to smash the heart of the Nazi war industry. Away and over the sea they roar, loaded with bombs. Each bomb big enough to blast an area of 10 city blocks. Coming in over the target. Tonight, it's Essen, and the camera records the destruction. An unusual freak. A bomb is hit by anti-aircraft fire and explodes in mid-air, falling to earth like a fiery comet. The RAF is softening up Nazi Europe for the Day of Reckoning. More warships for the United States Navy. This one's a destroyer escort, one of the newest weapons designed to protect convoys and smash Axis submarines. And another of the same type is ready for the sea. American shipyards that once took many months to build a ship are now breaking all records, from keel to launching within a matter of weeks. The Navy salutes a mother whose five sons gave their lives in the Battle of the Solomon Islands. A new destroyer is named in their honor. Christened by mother, the Sullivans goes down the ways, a sleek new destroyer to avenge the loss of Mother Sullivan's sons. This is the spirit of America at war. United States Army engineers working with models study how to trap enemy tanks, putting theory to the test. A roadblock of heavy logs, now a tank driver pits the power of his vehicle against the efficiency of the engineers. like the engineers win. The Army also has specially constructed roads to test trucks and guns. And a washboard highway that's like riding the ocean waves, only rougher. This is how United States soldiers learn to drive on roads anywhere in the world. throngs pack Hollywood's famous bowl to see and hear Madame Chiang Kai-shek. Norma Shear and Mary Pickford head a roster of cinema celebrities here to welcome China's First Lady. Chinese American soldiers proudly serve as guards of honor. Spectacular tribute to Madame Chiang and her cause, a pageant staged by Chinese living in California. Now, standing beneath the Chinese symbol for victory, her face grim evidence of great strain, Madame Chang makes a dramatic plea for the peoples of the world. We shall not permit aggression to raise its satanic head and threaten man's greatest heritage, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness for all peoples. When a training plane crashes, 
the Army has a special rescue squad that speeds to the pilot's aid. Soldiers in sailor suits. Within 12 seconds, boats are manned and they're on their way. Plane down in shallow water. And the sea soldiers plunge to the rescue. in swampy areas, they use gliders powered by airplane propellers. Fast, efficient, they've never lost a pilot. for the Army's youngest mascots, a litter of boxer pups just a few weeks old. Their mother was a champion parachute jumper with the Army before she was killed by a motor car. Now paratroops of the 1st Airborne Brigade are adopting her youngsters to bring them up to be good parachutists too. A warm pocket in the trouser leg is the safest, most comfortable spot. The little fellows don't know where they're going, but they're on their way. Here they go aboard a troop carrier for their first jump. And down they float to earth with never a whimper. Real parachutists, say the paratroopers, the highest flying pups in the army. Winter training for fresh Canadian artillery, now ordered overseas. Training that includes the handling of dynamite in doses big enough to blast a bridge or a mountain. Training that equips men to fight with any and all weapons. Training for the Allied invasion of Europe. Ready to leave for embarkation points, they go to swell the increasing numbers of United Nations forces gathering for the big thrust upon the Nazi-held continent. Volunteers making a journey more than 3,000 miles from home to fight for a cause they know is just. Train loads of Canadian-built tanks follow the troops to the coast. Here in the fog and sea mist of departing winter, the big convoys assemble. Cargoes of war swing over the sides of waiting merchantmen. Trucks from Ontario, scout cars from Quebec, lend-lease equipment and supplies from the United States. Working 24 hours a day to meet sailing time, the men of the Merchant Navy are doing their jobs well. The unlimited resources of North and South America united in delivering the goods as the convoys continue to go through.